Welcome to part two of Let's Play Revenge of the Vampire by Keith Martin. At the end of the last part, I was on paragraph one. Let's reread this as a reminder. Okay. Leaving the village behind you, you make for Lake Libra, following the riverside road. You get a lift on a cart from a friendly farmer and soon find yourself at the lakeside, the papers tucked safely inside your shirt. Then you realise that many monastic settlements throng the lakeside, and you do not know which one, in which one Sueth lives. So you knock at the front door of the first monastery to which you come, and ask the young monk who opens it if he knows where Sueth can be found. He shakes his head, but then he says that the monks of the Hamaskian monastery will know. There, the monks of the God of Learning will tell you where to find Sueth for a small donation. If you have one gold piece and are willing to pay them, they tell you where Sueth is to be found. If you can't or won't pay, then you have to keep asking around and you are delayed. Lose one blood point, 10 to 351. Okay, so we are going to pay, so let's lose a gold piece. There we go, puts me down to five. And blood points are intact, so 351, here we come. Sueth, you learn, is one of the elders of the Halls of the Stars and lives in a small building with a, uh, with a splendid glass dome. Gossip tells you that the monks of this place are rather eccentric, even by monkish standards, and keep themselves to themselves. They have a reputation for very odd and obscure studies, and no one is certain exactly what it is they do most of the time. You approach the monastery and rap the small gargoyle door knocker on the front door. A weedy young man in grey robes opens the door a fraction, and clearly he doesn't much like the look of you. You manage to stick one foot in the door and wave Henrik's papers in his face, saying that they must be delivered to Sueth urgently. Wait a moment, the youth says, determinedly forcing the door shut despite the obstacle of your foot. Inside a minute, two rather older monks are staring at you uh, round the reopened door. You explain yourself, and one of them says, Very well, you'd better come in. Sirith is away at the moment, but perhaps we can help. Uh, they admit you into their hallway and lead you into a Spartan room. You explain how you came by the papers you are carrying. I am Endrel, the taller and old of the monks says, and this is Marcus. We are two of the four elders here. Our colleagues, Sueth and Sandar, are, are away for a short time, though we expect Sueth back soon. May I, look, may I look at the papers you have brought? If you are happy to hand over the papers to him, turn to 257. If you don't want to do this, turn to 205. Okay, we don't want to do this, so we're turning to 205. I feel I should give them to Sueth in person, you say. They must be important if the man carrying them was killed because of them, or were killed because of them. I'll say that, I'll say that again. They must be important if the man carrying them were killed because of them. Endrel raises his eyebrows but makes no objection. Very well then, you must wait until Sueth returns, he says grudgingly. We can offer you such hospitality as we possess. You are shown to a plain bedroom with a hard pallet bed and a couple of blankets which seem to have been woven from the, from the roughest wall in all Titan. After some bread, a bowl of thin soup and a mug of water, uh, you pull the blankets over you and settle down to sleep. Turn to 74. Sleep doesn't come easily. The bed is very hard and it gets cold at nights. The blankets may be rough, but they don't keep you warm. They actually help to keep you awake, they're so ticklish. You toss and turn fitfully. Will you try to get back to sleep? Turn to 326. Find Endrel to talk some more if you haven't done so already. Turn to 132. Find Marcus to talk further if you haven't done so already. Turn to 356. Or get up and explore the monastery. Turn to 232. Okay, we are going to get up and explore the monastery and turn to 232. You gaze up and down the passages briefly to get your bearings. From outside your bedroom door, passages lead east and west. Eastwards are the rooms of the elder monks and some other chambers you, um, about which you don't know. To the west, the doors to the dining hall 
To the west, the doors to the dining hall face the main doors, and further along, there are more doors. Again, you do not know where these may lead to. If you want to explore to the east, turn to 265. If you want to head westwards, turn to 197. Okay, we are going to explore to the east and turn to 265. In the east wing of the monastery, there are several doors. There is one to the north, which must lead into a sizable room, judging by distances. To the south, there are two pairs of doors facing each other, uh, to the east and west. You know the first door to the west is Enjar's room, and you guess that the one facing it must be Marcus's room. Uh, the others you do not know about. Finally, there is a door to the south. You should explore somewhere you have not visited before. Will you open? The door to the north, turn to 375. The door to Marcus's room, if you haven't spoken with him already, turn to 356. The second door to the west, turn to 107. The second door to the east, turn to 181. Or the door to the south, turn to 135. Okay, we're going to open the second door to the east and turn to 181. You find yourself in a room containing many ledgers, scrolls and documents scattered all over the place. After a swift examination, you find some ledgers of books bought and borrowed from the library of the monastery. Looking at some recent entries, you find that both Sueth and Enjol have been borrowing books on Mortvania and the Undead, a fact which intrigues you. Uh, you also turn up two gold pieces in a pouch tucked in a you also turn up two gold pieces in a pouch tucked into a desk drawer. Regain one luck point. All right, so we're stealing from a monastery. Wonderful. Okay, so that puts our gold up to seven. Wonderful. And we regain one luck point, which puts us up to twelve. Wonderful. Good. Okay, um, you guess that the library is probably next door, so it should be the northern door. If you want to go there, turn to 275. If you want to search elsewhere in the east wing, turn to 265. If you prefer to head for the west wing of the monastery, turn to 197. Okay, we are going to search elsewhere in the east wing and turn to 265. <clears throat> okay, uh, we've already read this paragraph, so I shan't again. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to open the second door to the west and turn to 107. Uh, you push open the door of an unused guest room. If you wish to do so, you can make a brief search. Test your luck. If you are lucky, you find three gold pieces in a pouch carelessly left behind. If you are unlucky, you find nothing. If you don't want to test your luck, you don't have to do so. Uh, hence the term, if you wish to do so. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? Okay, so we're going to test our luck. Our luck is 12 at the moment, so we need this roll to be 12 or less, which it is. Brilliant. So we're lucky. Yes, we're lucky. So, um... But we lose a luck point, but we gain three gold pieces. That puts it up puts it up to ten. That's good. So ten gold pieces, but minus one luck point. Okay. Now you must search the east wing further, turn to 265, or make for the west wing, turn to 197. We're going to make for the west wing and turn to 197. Let's go. As you head west past your own bedroom, the doors to the dining hall are to your right and the main doors to your left. Beyond them, there is another door to your left. Gen to your left, gently opening it, you find a silent, empty bedroom. A silent, empty bedroom. Further along, there are three doors: two to the north and one to the south. Will you open the first door to the north? Turn to two hundred twenty-five. The second door to the north. Turn to two hundred thirty-six. Or the door to the south. Turn to two hundred eighty-one. We're going to open the first door to the north. And turn to 225. Nearly there. There we are. You force your way through the door and find yourself in the kitchens. There is an open trap door in the floor here and the stench of decay drifts upwards from below. You light your lantern and set off down the stone steps towards the corridor you can see below you. If you have slain a monk in the monastery, turn to 103. If you have not done so, turn to 293. Okay, slaying a monk and stealing the gold. That's 
That's not evil, is it? Okay, so we have not done so, of course not. Um, so if you have not done so, turn to 293. So here we come, 293. Here we are. You can hear someone muttering to himself. It is Enjol's voice. Must have escaped, he is cursing. He will have killed to eat. It's too late to worry now. I must get everything out of here and go to the master. Then the voice stops and you stand deadly still, but you can see a light coming towards you from the corridor below. If you want to stay where you are and challenge Endrel, turn to 316. If you, opt, if you opt to attack him, turn to 69. Okay, we are going to opt to attack him and turn to 69. Endrel isn't aware of your presence until you leap down the few remaining steps and strike at him with your sword. He is off guard. Test your skill. If you are successful, you wound him before he can react. He loses two points from his stamina and you regain one luck point. Whether you succeed or fail, you must now fight the furious monk. Endrel, skill 9, stamina 11. If you win, turn to 103. Okay, so we need to, te uh, we need to test our skills. That means... Our skill is 11, so we need this um, this double dice roll to be less than or equal to 11 to be successful, which we are. Good. So that means we fight skill 9, stamina 11, and we knock two points from his stamina. So we uh, so we need to regain a luck point. So that's 12. And we're fighting Endrel, who is 9, 11. Endrel and skill 9... Whoops. Stamina 11, but we've already knocked off two stamina points. I put it down to nine. And we're off. Okay, my skill is 11. Off we go. So, um, nine plus three is 12. I get 15. So, 12 to 15. Put some down to seven. Next. Nine plus six is 15, I get 22. So 15 to 22. Five, okay. Nine plus nine is 18, I get 17. So 18 to 17, that means he wins. I have to knock off two stamina points now. Puts you down to 19, okay. Back we go. Okay, 9 plus 2 is 11. I get 23. So 11 to 23. Oops. Uh, 3. There we go. Okay, 9 plus 4 is 13. I get 22. So 13 to 22. There we go. Put some down to 1. 9 plus 11 is 20, I get 16, so 20 to 16. That means Endrel hurts me. Puts me down to 17. Okay, 9 plus 8 is 17, I get 15, so 17 to 15. And he hurts me again. Down to 15. 9 plus 12 is 21. I get 20. So 21 to 20. That means he wins again. Let's be down to 13. Okay. 9 plus... 5 is 14, I get 17. So 14 to 17. That slays Endrel, and we're done. Okay, so that's that. Um, if you win, turn to 103. The corridor leads into a maze of catacombs and passageways. The skeletons of long dead monks gaze at you from alcoves in the walls, and bones, dust and cobwebs are everywhere. You hardly know where to begin exploring down here. This is going to take you quite some time. Roll one die and divide the number by two, rounding fractions up. This is the number of blood points you lose during your extended search. Let's do that now. So roll one die, divide by two. 
Okay. Okay, we get six divided by two is three, and yep, yeah, so three. We lose three blood points uh, from that. So blood points, we're down to seven. Eventually, you see a silver tube gleaming in an alcove, and cautiously you take it down. Inside are some carefully copied notes made by Seweth himself. You sit down to read by the light of your lantern, your heart beating fast. Heydrich knows of our letters. I believe he has even corrupted this place with his influence. But is it Endrel, Marcus or Sandar he has tainted? All of them avoid me now, yet none is a vampire himself. I am sure of that. Heydrich must have corrupted his victim with the lure of power, or hypnotised him into his service. I must send word to Henrik regarding the soul gem the vampire now has. Until it is found, he will be invulnerable. It will be absolutely impossible to slay him. Okay, so let's write down that I need this soul gem. So, we need the soul gem. Okay. I know who crafted it and what magic was used. I have recorded these facts in my codex, which I have hidden carefully, and I know where Heydrich has made his home in these lands. Alas, the map that was sketched below these notes is illegible. It is smeared and smudged. However, you are sure that wherever the monster may be, he lies to the northeast from here, but you cannot tell exactly where. But at least you have learned of some secret of his a magically crafted gem, so gain two blood points. Okay, blood points up to nine then. Whoops. <clears throat> of the precious codex, which could tell you so much, there is no sign. Turn to two. You hear, you hear a flapping, scraping sound behind you, and looking around, you see a huge black bat grinning at you. Its flight is cumbersome in these enclosed passages, and it has to draw its wings round itself. But it is making its way towards you, and can it? Oh, and yes, typo. And it can move faster than you can. The thing has evilly glowing red eyes, long, sharp teeth, and wickedly curved claws as long as your fingers. You will have to fight it here. Horned vampire bat. Skill eight, stamina ten. If you win, blah blah blah. Okay, I'll read that later. So, horned vampire bat eight ten. Off we go. Horned vampire. Vampire bat. Vampire, that's how they pronounce vampire on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. He's a vampire. I do hate that program. I really do. Although I have seen every episode, so um, make sense of that what you will. Okay. Um, my well, elf skill is 11, and we're fighting horned vampire bat, which is 8 to 10. Just can't stand the bloke that plays Giles, that contrived posh accent. Ugh. Ugh. I hate I hate him. I hate I hate him. I have revulsion towards him. He he repulses me in on a very deep level, uh, Anthony Head. Anyway, um I'm oh, sorry, Anthony Stewart Head, because he has to have his have his middle name in there for some reason. You know, to make him sound more sort of more sort of like an actor, like a professional actor. You can't just call himself Anthony Head, it has to be Anthony Stewart Head. You know, because that's normal, isn't it? Everyone who has a middle name always uses their full name and everything. Anyway, enough of that. I could go on about that programme for ages, all the things that annoy me about it. Although one of them is the fact that they say vampire. Anyway, enough of that. Right, so we're fighting a horned vampire bat. My skill is 11, his is 8. Okay, 8 plus 8 is 16. I get 16, so 16 all. And no one hurts anyone else. Right, good. So 8 plus 7 is 15. I get 15. Oh, that's, that's interesting. So 15 all again. Again, no one hurts anyone. All right, so 8 plus... Here we go. 11 is 19. I get... I get 20, I just win. There we go. So 19 to 20. So 
puts them down to 8. Okay, 8 plus 9 is 17. I get 17. So again, no one hurts each other. Um, okay, 8 plus 9 is 17. I get 22. So 17 to 22. Puts them down to 6. 8 plus 7 is 15. I get 21. So 15 to 21. Whoops. Puts them down to 4. 8 plus 8 is 16. I get 16. No one hurts each other. Okay, so 8 plus 5 is 13. I get 15. So 13 to 15. That puts, he didn't do that. Puts them down to 2. 8 plus 7 is 15. I get 22. So 15 to 22. And that's the end of, the, the end of Mr. Horned Vampire Bat. Vampire Bat. You know, the number of times, you know, I remember on one episode, Spike says he doesn't breathe, right? right? So if he doesn't breathe, how can he smoke? Riddle me that. If he doesn't breathe, how can he smoke? In fact, how can he talk? He should be silent because he doesn't breathe. So how does that make sense? Um, answers on a postcard, please. Or in the comments, how does Spike breathe on Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Because he says he doesn't I mean, not how does he breathe? How does he speak or smoke on Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Because in an episode, I think it was series seven, or season seven, as they say, um, he says he doesn't breathe. Um, so how does he smoke or speak? Please answer that in a comment. Anyway, enough of that. Although I do actually like Spike as a character. He was the only good character, the most interesting one. Anyway, um, he was certainly good on Angel. He certainly improved Angel. Uh, series 5 of Angel is actually very good. Um, anyway, enough of that. All right. If you win, you decide uh, that it is high time you got out of this place. You reckon that Sueth must be dead. He learned too much. On the way out, you spot the gleam of gold at the bony feet of one of the skeletal monks. Taking this would be dishonourable. As opposed to killing a monk and stealing from the monastery, this would be dishonourable. The gold must have been buried with the monk, perhaps as an offering to one of the gods. If you want to take the seven gold pieces pieces that are here, you must lose one faith point. Make your decision, then head on upwards. Turn to 125. Okay. Okay, I'm not going to take the gold, so I'm going to turn to 125. As you leave the kitchen, a chilly draught tells you that the front doors to the monastery are open. There is no sign of any monk, but the southern door in the west wing is open, and, and the corpse of a monk has been dragged to the doorway. Blood has seeped along almost the whole passageway. You gape at the terrible sight, then you hear the sound of horses whinnying outside. You rush to the door in time to see a black coach with its driver pulling on the reins of four black stallions as a caped figure disappears into the coach. If you want to attack the occupant of the coach, turn to 214. If discretion makes you decide not to do this, turn to, turn to 371. Okay, there we go. Brilliant. Okay. Okay, we are going to attack the occupant of the coach and turn to 214. Bravely, but foolishly, uh, you race to the coach and strike out at the figure through the door of the coach as he closes in. You strike him, but without a magical weapon you cannot harm him. He grabs hold of the blade in his hands without even cutting himself and brings it down, pommel first, in a mighty blow on your skull. Um, yeah, mighty blow on your skull. I deduct three points from your stamina. Puts me down to 10. 
You are too stunned and concussed even to get a good look at him, but you but you remember his mocking laughter as he slams the coach door. Lose one luck point, but gain one faith point for your bravery. Turn to 371. So we've lost a luck point, but gained the faith points. So that puts me up to 8. And lost a luck point, that puts me down to 11 again. Okay. Um, turn to 371. Here we go. The black coach vanishes in the darkness. Somehow you have to pursue it in order to find out where the creature which has brought death and mayhem to the monks has gone. If you want to make one final check inside the monastery before giving chase, turn to 346. If you prefer to pursue the coach at once, do you have at least 8 gold pieces? If you have, turn to 276. If you do not have this much, turn to 203. Okay, we're going to pursue the coach at once because we do have 8 gold pieces. So... Um, okay, so we do have at least um, eight gold pieces, so turn to 276. By great good fortune, you come across a simple farmer leading a horse back to the back to his farmstead. Darned thing escaped again. He loves running away. The wretch must have been all the noise of folks getting up at nights that roused him. The old farmer grumbles. The horse looks distinctly perky and frisky. Not the usual farm work horse at all. If you want to, you can buy the horse, but it's going to cost you every gold piece you have, no matter how much that is. If you're ready to pay up, turn to 87. If you won't hand over all your gold, turn to 203. Okay. We're not going to hand over all our gold, so we're going to turn to 203. Um, you follow the road leading eastwards away from the lakeside settlement. You spend a long time walking. You must eat two meals and you lose two blood points. Okay, so that's... Provisions is down to 10, but I don't gain any stamina. And we've lost two blood points. That takes me down to 7. If you have blood bane, you must deduct one point from both your initial and current stamina scores. Um, no, we don't have blood bane. Um, whoops. Okay. Uh, you stop at a coaching inn and ask after the black coach. People talk to you with strange glazed expressions and they deny they have seen anything of the sort. Something in their manner makes you suspicious and when they deny with particular vehemence that the coach continued eastward. You are sure you are on the right track after all. Turn to 279. Not far from the coaching inn, the road leads north eastwards and you have a long journey ahead of you. You ask everyone you meet about the coach and from time to time someone tells you he has seen the infernal carriage. You can only hope that you are still on the right track. If you have a horse, you need to eat two meals during your travels. If you're on foot, you must eat five meals. <sighs> Puts me down to uh, five provisions. Um, if you have blood bane, you must deduct two more points from your initial and current stamina scores. Eventually, you find yourself in a small hamlet where you may buy supplies if you have any money to pay for them. You can buy provisions. One gold piece will buy enough for three meals. Okay, we're going to buy that. So we're going to put our provisions up to eight and then lose a gold piece. So down to nine. If you want to sell your horse, if you have one, a farmer will give you four, go four gold pieces for him. It's daylight robbery, but you have little choice. No one here will sell you a horse, though. They're in short supply, except for clapped-out nags that no one in their right mind would want to own. If you want to ask about healing or scholars or any magician who, who may be living in the area, turn to 334. If you want to press on, turn to 89. Okay, we are going to ask about healing or scholars or whatever, and turn to 334. The occupants of this hamlet are mercenary wretches. Give us a gold, 
and I'll tell you what you want to know is all that any of them will say. If you're willing to pay up, turn to 358. If you can't or won't pay, turn to 89. Uh, you could also spend a day working here, doing manual labour, in order to earn a gold piece. If you want their help, uh, if you want their help. If you do this, you must lose one blood point for the delay, and you will lose one point from both your initial and current stamina scores if you have blood bane. Then you should press onwards by turning to 89. Okay. Okay, we are willing to pay. So turn to 358. Oh, what a handsome woman. At least she would be if she removed that evil glare. Um, yeah, evil glare she has. And and if she did, I'd be in love. I'd be madly in love with her. But I'm not, because she looks evil. Anyway, uh, the villagers tell you that a strange, eccentric fellow is live. Oh, I need to deduct a gold piece. No, no. So it puts me down to eight. The villagers tell you that a strange eccentric fellow is living at the eastern boundary of the hamlet. Uh, forget his name, Xandar, Sender, something like that. Anyway, he mended that lame leg old Snotman had. Remember? The others nod their heads in remembrance. He might be able to, t to help you if you got some kind of disease or, or something. But yeah, um, bet you he meddles in magic too. Them funny old strangers often do, like. There are vague whispers about foreigners from the group here at the mention of diseases some of them look at you a bit askance and you decide it's probably time to go you can seek out the eccentric old healer if you wish turn to five otherwise you continue north eastwards in pursuit of your quarry turn to 89 okay we're going to seek out the eccentric old healer and turn to five You head east until you come to a secluded house hidden behind very thick high hedges. A pair of rusted iron gates half open give access to a pathway and just inside the gates are some run-down stables. Uh, you go through the gates. If you want to explore the stables, turn to 376. If you prefer to make straight for the house, turn to 98. Okay, and we will decide what we're going to do in the next video. So, next paragraph is paragraph, what is it, 5? Yeah, five. So next paragraph is five. And we will decide whether to go for the stables or the house in the next video. Hope you enjoyed this part. Thanks for watching and goodbye.